Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,318. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,317 to 1,318 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a, a great question here that's a seemingly simple question and answer. All we want to know is for any particular set of dates at this job site, how many different employees are there? Now, it would be a simple matter if there were no duplicates, but there's duplicates. So the correct answer here is 1, 2, 3. When we get down to the 30th, the correct answer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this with formulas, but anytime you get to what is in essence a unique count formula in Excel, it is just crazy difficult. Now, what I'm going to show you before I do formulas is an amazing new feature in Excel 2016. Now, Excel 2016's only been out for about a year, but there are so many features inside of Excel 2016 that are better than anything we've ever had from the data get and transform, which is Power Query, to Power Pivot, to new functions like text join, and a pivot table trick that we're going to see that will solve this problem here quick and easy. So everyone should go out and get Excel 2016. All right, you ready? And I'll just tell you what's going to happen. We're going to build a pivot table. We're going to drag the dates to the row area. It'll give us the use unique date. Then we're going to drag the employee field down to the values area. And there is a distinct count function inside the pivot table. All right, you ready? I have a proper data set. Field names at the top, records and rows. And there's empty cells all the way around. So I click in a single cell. I go up to Insert, Tables, Pivot Table. Or I use the keyboard Alt-N-V. I'm going to put this on an existing sheet in this location. But wait a second. The trick is this. You have to add this data to the data model. Now, the data model is, is part of Power Pivot. That is a special add-in that is not in all versions of Excel 2016. But guess what? Even though we can't access it directly, it's still in Excel 2016. So if we check this, we can't do our fancy DAX formulas with Power Pivot, but we can still do a Power Pivot pivot table and get to that unique count function. So when we check this, it's going to go behind the scenes into a columnar database. We don't need to worry about that if we don't have Power Pivot. We just need to check that. And before we click OK, I'm going to put this right in I6 and click OK. Now, it takes a little bit longer than normal because it's adding it to the data model. Now, I'm going to drag this over to the side to lodge it right there. Scroll over, and here it is. The date, anytime you drag a field down to the rows area, you instantly get a unique list. Now I'm going to drag employee down to values. And of course, when you drag a text field, this is text, into a pivot table, the default is counting. But no problem. Right click, summarize values by, and I'm going to come down to more options. That's just one way to open up value field settings. And if I go down to the bottom, here's all the functions, right? There's 11 of them. It used to be that there was a product, but nobody used that, so they took it out. And in a power pivot pivot table, there's this amazing distinct count. When I click OK, that is the answer. How many unique employees were at each site, at this particular site, on each one of these days? Now, I don't like that row labels. And unfortunately, we don't have an easy way to change this. We always have to come up to Design, Layout, Report Layout, and Show in Tabular. So really, that is the answer for how to count the number of employees at each date. Now, this person said that they wanted to make a graph then. You would simply make a line chart. I go click inside the pivot table, Insert. Over to Charts, I'm selecting Line, not XY Scatter. And there we go. I could fix up the chart by deleting the legend. 
click on the chart title, immediately click in the formula bar, type in equal sign, and I'm going to click inside the pivot table where they create that distinct count of employees and enter. I've linked that chart title to a label inside the pivot table. Right click those field buttons, hide all field buttons on chart, and there it is. That is a perfectly good chart. Now, this is not the Excel table feature where I would add new records to the bottom, but I could click in a single cell, go up to Insert, convert it to a table, and then as I added new records, this chart would update. All right, so that is the easy way to do this. Now, I wrote a whole book about pivot tables. This is the third printing, and it has a blue color, and there's a new section with a couple formula, new formulas at the end, and a summarization of every formula at the end with page numbers. And finally, the book has a table of contents at the beginning with the correct page numbers. There it is. This formula that I'm going to do is straight from this book. All right, now anytime we're doing a unique count formula, and it's not straight numbers, we're going to start with the match function, or match is an efficient way to do this. Now, match looks up an item and tells you the relative position in the list. So if I told match to look up Tyrone, it would go, hey, Tyrone is in the fourth position. But we're going to do a function argument array operations because I want to simultaneously find the relative position of every item. So in the lookup value, I'm going to highlight the whole column of names, F4. By putting many items into lookup value, that makes match spit out many answers, comma. Now we give it the same exact array, so it'll look up everything simultaneously, F4. And the trick is comma 0 for exact match, because we want to only find each item one time. So if I look up Tyrone with exact match, Match can only see the first Tyrone. It actually can't see the second one. And what I mean by that is Match will find four here and four here. So if I click at the end and hit the F9 key to evaluate this, look at that. Sue, 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 because Sue is in the first position. It's ignoring those duplicates. Tyrone, Tyrone, ignoring duplicates. Now, this is for everything, and I really want only the ones for each particular date. So for the first 29th, I actually only want to analyze 1, 1, 1, 4, 5, 5, 7, 7. So watch this, Control-Z. I'm going to isolate everything by using the if function. And in the logical test, I'm going to say, hey, look at all the dates, F4 to lock it. Are any of you equal to the particular date as a relative cell reference? comma. If that's true, then please give me whatever number is there. Now I'm going to come to the end. Value of false. I'm going to leave that out so the if function will force falses into the resultant array, which will get rid of all the excess numbers not on the 29th. If I F9 and evaluate this, I have filtered out everything with false. Now I only have the relative positions for the particular day I'm interested in. Now, that's not quite enough because I need to somehow reduce this down to a count of three. Well, I can do that with the frequency function, Control-Z. That will be our whole data array. So I'll type frequency. That's the data I want to count, right? But now, comma, and inside frequency bins array. I need the upper limits for counting. I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way from 1 to 20 different records here. So I need to, in this array right here, create an array of sequential numbers from 1 to 20. So I can do that with the row function. I'm going to say, hey, row, look at all the dates. And actually, it doesn't matter which one of these columns, because they all have 20 records. F4 to lock it, close parentheses, row. Of course, we'll give us if I F9789, because those are the row numbers, Control-Z. That's not what I want. Remember, I want 1 to 20, so I subtract row. Now, I'm assuming this is a proper data set with a field name always attached to the top. So that's why I'm going to click at the top. Now, look, what is it going to do? 7 minus 6 is 1, 8 minus 6 is 2, and so on. So I F4 to lock it, close parentheses. And now in the bins array, I can prove 
that that's working with the F9 key. There's my 1 to 20. Those are the upper limits for counting. So now it will count in that bin the three ones for 829, which should give me a 3 there. There's nothing in 2, 3. 4 should get 2, and so on. Control-Z, come to the end, close parentheses. Now let's evaluate this with F9. And there's my series of numbers greater than 0 to tell me that that is an employee from the 29th, and it is a unique occurrence. So all of these zeros will be ignored. I'm going to use the if function, because the if function can interpret any non-zero number as true and zeros as false. Control Z. I'm going to put that whole thing inside the if. All right, so logical test. Well, what do I want? If I see a true comma, I should have dragged this over here. What do I want? I want a 1 because I'm going to be counting. I'm leaving false out, so false will be put in. If I F9 this, check that out. There's my filtered list falses and a 1, 1, 1. If I add all these 1s, that's my unique count with the condition of this date for the employees. Control Z, I'm going to put it inside the sum function because I want to add. Sum, by the way, is programmed to ignore those falses. Close parentheses at the end. This is a big array formula. None of the arguments in any of these functions are programmed to handle array operations without using the special keystroke. And the special keystroke to get Excel to understand this array formula is Control, Shift, and Enter. As soon as you do that, look up to the formula bar. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you it understood that this was supposed to be calculated as array formula. By the way, if I hit Enter here, I get the wrong answer. And that's through implicit intersection because it's next to the data set. If you did an array formula and forgot that special keystroke, and it's not next to the data set, it gives you a value error. Control Z. Now I have to put it back into edit mode and re-enter it with Control Shift Enter. I see those curly brackets. I know it's working. Double click and send it down. That formula, if I come to the end in F2, that is a lot more complicated especially if you've never done formulas like this before, then the amazing 2016 distinct count function in a data model pivot table. All right, we'll see you next trick.